Most people listen to podcasts to learn something, to be entertained and to walk away feeling inspired, perhaps even educated a bit. Hello, I'm Devo and I'm one of the two hosts of our show, The Little Impolite Podcast. Welcome and thanks for listening. This show is for the expansive, open-minded creative whose persistent curiosity towards integrating new information in their lives never stops. Think of it as the free thinkers toolkit for anyone that refuses to enroll in the conformity of all of those around them, instead forging their own paths with fortitude and love. It's that slightly unapologetic conversation with that new friend you just met that sort of wistfully and effortlessly pushes the conversation into spaces that you never expected. It's the deep-hearted conversations with purposeful and thoughtful individuals that have finally figured out their superpowers and are now pouring into it with gusto and love. We're delighted to host these conversations with you that lead us down the conversation well. But watch your step, because most of our guests, and of course, Lisa and I, are a little impolite. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm Devo, and thank you for tuning in today to the Little Impolite podcast. And sitting next to me is the partner in crime, the beat of all beats, Miss Lisa Staff. Hello. Um, if you're new to our podcast, we're really glad that you joined us. We used to be under another name, Mind Body Business. Well, we bought we've out. been Yeah, everybody wants a piece of man. They're just all invested. But now we're a little impolite because everyone said that Devo was a little impolite and it just seemed like the right fit. But we're glad that you found us if you're new to us. And um, a little bit about us. Why are we doing this? We're doing this because I like to talk and I, no one else will listen to me. So I picked up a mic and I have a captured audience and I can say whatever I want. Truthfully speaking, we launched the show uh, almost three years ago. Mm-hmm. And it was our way of trying to find a broader audience of people to connect with Mm -hmm. that were doing really cool things around the planet. And we like sharing stories and part of our business is centered around storytelling. So we thought, what better way than to invite really cool people doing really cool shit around the planet onto a show, have an hour long conversation or however long it takes to just sort of learn a little bit about what they're doing, their superpower and what impact they're leaving and legacy they're leaving on this planet. And that's really what the show centers around. And have you found that a lot of these people that we've had conversations with have, have impacted your life? Well, it's funny you ask that question because I launched a, a mastermind recently, as you're well mm-hmm. aware of. And with the exception of one person, everyone that's in that mastermind with us now that has committed to it, mm-hmm. ha- I, we've known for the last three years from the podcast or multiple podcasts. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, there's some brilliant people doing some brilliant things. And this is our way of sharing that piece of the world with our listeners. And I love that they're not all doing the same thing. And I think that we all feel like the market is super saturated with everybody's doing the same thing. So why would I start? But there's people doing their own thing in their own way mm-hmm. with their own voice. And a lot of these people that we've had on our podcast and that have become part of, part of your mastermind are people that some of them were really surprised that they said yes, that they want to be on our podcast. They just want to give back. They want to be part of a good conversation and they're easy to connect with and to um, ask questions or do any of those things. You know, I think a lot of times we think like we're too small. Nobody would want to be part of our conversation. And we're continually surprised at the people that are energetically aligned and want to just give back to the human race. Yeah, I don't think that at all. I don't think we're too small at all. I think we're brilliant and we're blowing up and we're going to be fantastically big. And no, I'm joking. Yeah, you're absolutely right. I think it's um, I think it's great. The, the show's awesome. The people we've had on are great. And you and I met on Instagram. Yeah. And and today we're going to talk about um, we are uh, how how do you manage a business and being in a relationship? And a little known fact, we are in relationship. Um, we were in relationship first, and then we decided to start a business second. Mm-hmm. And and then she can't get rid of me now. So. Um, we're going to have a conversation around just sort of how you and I, our take on business and professional life and that intersection and and how we still find time to be happily in love <laughs> with each other. I think, I think this has really pointed this conversation because there's been a shift in the world, in the consciousness. A lot of people are trying to get out of the corporate world and they're starting their own businesses. And who better than to start a business with than your partner? And that's not always the case. Just because you're married or you're, you know, boyfriend, girlfriend or, or um, partners or anything like that, it's not 
always a good fit. And I'm speaking personally because I was in a, a relationship before that we were we were in business together and we were that typical mom and pop team. And everybody thinks that because you're a mom and pop team, isn't that cute? Isn't it nice? It's not always nice. Sometimes you're fighting and you want to strangle the other person. So what you're saying is this experience now has been nothing but bed of roses? No, we're not saying that. We, yeah. we obviously have our tips. <laughs> but the cool, thing about, the cool thing about me, at least from my perspective, uh-huh. because I was in business with a former partner before to some extent. She, didn't, she, did, she did do some work in my mm-hmm. business. Mm-hmm. Um, I respect Lisa, and um, not only as a person, but as a professional. And so one of the things we're going to talk about is critical to being in bed, metaphorically and literally, is that there has to be a modicum of of respect around who you're working with from a professional and a personal level because well, we're going to talk about it. So yeah. stay tuned. Listen so to if show. you're thinking of, of doing this, making this decision, making this relationship into a business relationship as well, here's some things that we found that might help you along the way. And if you're already in this situation, you might agree with some things or you might walk away with, Hey, here's a different way to, to handle that situation or this might help in our, in our, in our sphere. Mm-hmm. So surprisingly enough, and I didn't realize this prior to preparing for the show, but there's a massive population, especially in the Western world, of couples that are successful and in business and in bed together. And I didn't realize the number, and you'll hear about it in the show, I didn't realize the number was that large. Um, But they're a massive, considerably more than I expected. So Mm -hmm. um, that gives me a lot of hope because then I know that you have to keep me around for a lot longer just based upon the data points. So, But those relationships as well could be with best best friends also, right? You know, like I think no, before, husband and wife or partner, partner. Was the yeah, I know. But I think also, you know, that, that applies to going into business with someone that is your best friend or whatever mm-hmm. as well. Yeah. So anyhow, so if you enjoy the show, drop us a comment below, leave us a review because that helps us expand the show and bring on more amazing guests and continue talking about scintillating topics like this. And at the end of the show, we have a download for you. Lisa, tell them what that download is. Uh, we also have another business because we're in business together where we do branding, social media, marketing, content creation, all the things that small businesses need or medium sized businesses. And we found that Part of the problem with most of us when we're in our own business is a healthy relationship with social media. So Devo's put together a fabulous um, download, a movie that's maybe 10 minutes Mm -hmm. for you to kind of digest and all the things that will help you to still show up in the right way with social media, but still walk away feeling sane, feeling like you haven't wasted half of your time uh, during the day and that you can still put money, energy, time into your business. Mm Mm-hmm. So give it a listen, download it. it. Again, it's like 10 minutes. And real quick question, since we're in business and bed together, why do you have a pair of your panties over here on the conference room table in the broadcast room? Anyway, unprofessional. It's not. It's a mask from my oh, son. Even worse. Okay. Yeah, I have to get back to him. <laughs> that was sort of be my life fun, like the business. No, you know, it's You were just not. supposed to like roll with no. it. No. <laughs> All right. See you after the show. Thanks. Actually, we won't see you after the show, but listen and see you around. Okay. Well, welcome to the a little into life conversation. Sounds like a rebranding. Yes. A little foreshadowing of what's to come. Hopefully, by the time this podcast gets produced, our rebranding exercise has been completed and we have launched the Little Into Life podcast into the stratosphere. Yes. Because my breasts are like, I knew it could have been We've been podcasting since. 8 a.m. this morning. We did three podcasts for other people, and this is ours. We just felt like we need to talk about what we want to talk about right now. And I'm not really hearing you very well, so I'm going to turn you up just a bit and turn you up and turn you on. of that? A little cheesy. No. I have another pickup line. Really? We should do a podcast with some horrible pickup lines. So we each come up with 10 of our best pickup yeah. lines. We yeah. don't share them with each other. <laughs> and <laughs> there for a while when you were on Instagram, you uh-huh. actually had real content to share. Oh. I, I, was, I was dropping pickup lines on your feed, but you never like once that. responded to them. So that obviously didn't work. No. Try again, actually. I'll, I'll show up. That was when I was trying to take a little hiatus from Instagram because it was sucking the life out of my soul. How about go for you? Because your people need you. And you always need validation. My people don't really need me, but they, they were like, are you okay? I'm like, that's 
saying they're going to show up on Instagram and a little too needy on Instagram. And maybe it was good that I took a break. So they're, they're not like, I haven't phoned them and they're worried. It's like, you're not on Instagram. Are you okay? So I posted on Instagram today for the first time in weeks. And um, I think it's one of your friends popped into my Are, are you going? Into my DM, so that's my <laughs> <laughs> Lord yeah. loves a little Napoleon dynamite. <laughs> All right, so what do you want to talk to me about today? Because I have my agents in my ear telling me I'm going to put my Are you taking dogs out for a while later? <laughs> so Lisa and I, have, for those of you who don't know, probably almost everyone since she keeps me in the shadows, have been in business together and in bed together for four and a half years. And oh, did that, did that, did that, did that, did that get out just now? Hashtag shame. <laughs> <laughs> so we thought we'd have a conversation on how we make it work because we know we know a lot of people are mom and pops in the early days of their of their business and they start off husband wife teams and that sort of stuff. And while well, you haven't agreed to become my wife yet, I don't know why. We'll have a conversation about that. You are, for all intents and purposes, on your way of belonging to me. So <laughs> <laughs> and that's why we're not married. So we thought we'd have a conversation on how two independent business owners, A, came together, and B, how being that we're sort of like alpha in, in the sense of running around businesses, how do two people sort of co-mingle and still have some modicum of sanity, modicum of success, and at the end of the day, still be inspired to actually date each other um, after we spend literally all day long together from podcasting to business to shooting to photography to planning to everything. Because I can only show up with my best self for so long. You know, at some point I need to check out. So if I'm being my best self and working with you, at some point I need to check out and just be like, oh, I can be on all day. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm always on to the night. I'm going to the side for us. So that's my take on it. Okay. So let's have a real conversation. So um, I met you almost five years ago. April will be five years that I've physically known you. April 4th, 2017 is when I first saw you on Instagram. Yes, you and that's right. And dropped in your DMs with a um, just rather innocuous message. And that was... Hey, what's up, baby? <laughs> I did not drop any pickup lines. No, you didn't. It was actually all of business. So I, I reached out to you because almost truthfully speaking, I was intrigued by sort of your personality and your zest and the things that you were putting on Instagram. And then I saw you in that bikini at one time in Greece and I was like, oh yeah, I'm calling this girl. So yeah. oh. no, my feed you're mixing me up with someone oh. else. You're like, <laughs> I didn't know. So I did send you a note. <laughs> I just think if you, you mixed me up and you thought you were going to have a relationship with someone else who's wearing a bikini in the last five years have actually been a mistake. Or I'm interdimensionally traveling in that other dimension. I'm dating another person who had images of her on Instagram. And I was like, mm-hmm. and I just reached out. And then I'm like, going back. I don't think you're that. I'm sorry. Uh, okay. Um, you mentioned something already about mom and pop teams. And I think I have some PTSD around that because mm-hmm. I did spend... Um, a considerable amount of my previous life in a mom and pop team. And I have PTSD around that because I think some people think it's really cute, but on the other hand, it can be really unprofessional as well. And I think when we got together with our, our co-business that we founded together, it was very, very straight up with you. I don't want to be mom and pop. I don't want any mom and pop vibes coming across. I remember working mom, mom and pop and being in a fight with your your co-owner slash sprout, not sprout, spouse. And he, so what qualifies as a mom and pop? Not literally the term, but when you think of the qualities of a mom and pop business, what does, what does that come, what comes to mind? I think it depends on what the business is. I know in photography and if there's people shooting weddings and it's a mom and pop, they're like, oh, that's so romantic. There's nothing romantic. I know, but I'm asking the question of the qualities of it. So tell me what, when you see a mom and pop organization, and, and I, that's, a, that's a slang for qualities of what? What, what qualifies as a mom and pop? I, I think myself personally, if it's a family business, I appreciate it more if it's mom and pop. I, don't. I know, but I'm asking, so get to the bottom of what a mom and pop means to you. Does that mean that they don't have workflow, they don't have 
specific ways of doing business or they do like what is that when when you get PTSD around what does that mean to you? I think that possibly um it can get any I'm not sure if you need to cover that question any further. <laughs> um, I think sometimes I think that they're not looking at their highest potential, that they didn't hire other people to come on to be um professionals in whatever line they're in. They just kind of fudged it together. Um, I think, I mean, I understand what it means to me. So when I think about a mom and pop organization, I, I think it's people who are, there's a difference between family and business and mom and pop. And for me, mom and pop has sort of a denigrating term in, in the sense that they're kind of amateurs. Mm -hmm. They haven't spent the time to really be clear on who runs the business, what the business offers. They may do it part-time. Um, they just they, they show up sort of on the fly. There's no strategy. There's no business planning. It's just sort of like, hey, we're here to just do whatever we do. And we're just going to sort of uh, kind of like a half-assed job. Mm -hmm. that way. Yeah. We're seeing pants. So, you, so when you and I came together, we both had a pretty, real, very, we still do, we had very successful businesses mm -hmm. independently. And we worked together <clears throat> for almost three and a half years, just sort of facilitating each other's businesses, mm -hmm. you working with me, vice versa, mm -hmm. travel the planet, doing all sorts of destination events and that sort of stuff. And for me, um, I, have, I always appreciated how we and I worked together. So when we first started talking about the idea of coming together as business partners, I had some concerns just because I've always been the boss. Um, and you're very strong will and you're very, um, you run your own businesses and, and all that sort of stuff. So, but I knew that I, I knew how much I enjoyed you and I knew how much value you offered. And so I figured that I'd be able to put up with some nonsense and, and go into that space. But all joking aside, like for me, it was, I wouldn't say it was a no brainer. Um, but for me, it was an easy decision to make. Uh, but now we'll fast forward. We've been together for five years. We've, worked, we've been working together for a year and a half, like tight knit in the same business. Mm -hmm. What are some of the struggles that you have seen in terms of getting used to or my different, my different management style, et cetera? Just, can you expand a little bit about some of that? Um, I think, okay, so we spent the day today being on three other podcasts and people were surprised when we came on it was two people, two guests that they were having. I'm like, well, usually I'm used to speaking to one person. But I think with most things, when you start collaborating with other people, there's growth and expansion. It takes in a direction further than you could have ever done yourself. And I think I had that realization that as we got together and we talked about ideas, those ideas grew and we kind of bounced off of each other and things sprouted, hence the name Spark Connectors. Mm -hmm. But things just grew in a way exponentially faster or in directions that we never would have been able to take on ourselves. Continue. No, so but on the on the I'm sorry, yeah. keep going. But on the other hand, working as an entrepreneur, sol solopreneur, you get used to seeing your vision happen and looking at it like this is the way to do it. Mm -hmm. And I think there's a struggle with ego, as with any relationship is your way the best way mm. or stepping aside and letting something else come to life, birth and grow. And that I think sometimes was me watching you do something, understanding that my way was probably not the right way to do it, or it was a good way to do it. Yours might be better and kind of filling in the gaps for each other. But I think ego is the biggest thing as with, with personal relationships as well. So I, I, I'm just going to, because I don't have a filter, I'm just gonna say, I, I have some stories to sort of, um, to not counter that, but to um, support what you just said. Um, early on, when I first started working with you, and you know, I was doing a lot of just filming you and just going on site for gigs, because you weren't really used to, in my opinion, mm -hmm. just speaking candidly, my observation was since you really weren't used to somebody that was just sort of supporting you in all areas, I sort of always felt invisible when I was helping you. And I, and I didn't, I originally I took it sort of personal. I'm like, she didn't even introduce me, but she's not who I think I am type of thing. I, I introduced you. Yeah, but this is my, <laughs> this my, is my man you over here. This is my version. Of so when I would show up on your gigs, this is early before we even started Sprout, when I would show up on your gigs and I would just sort of like, I was your, basically I was your bitch to take yeah. all your photos for you, assist you. And I was happy to I be. I worked a long time to have someone be my bitch. So I was very happy to sort of be there and support you. But at the same time, I remember thinking like, 
I kind of want to be introduced and who you are. Who? Do, 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 do. Yeah, it wasn't so much that. It was just more like I would be on on the set with you, and nobody even knew who I was. And my ego, because I I sort of like I you have a fanfare usually with your people. Yeah. So yeah. So I noticed that early on, and in, in like I'd be there, like nobody even knows who I am. I'm actually not her. <laughs> Somebody. I was at one of your photo shoots. I'll get time. you a name tag, okay? I was at one of your photo shoots one time, and one of your people like came up and handed me their bag, and I was like, "I'm not carrying your bag. I'm here for this woman here, the blonde over there with the nice ass. I'm not here to carry your bag, bitch." So, so, so speaking of ego, let me finish. So, speaking of ego, I remember thinking, well, "Wow, this is a whole new, different paradigm shift for me because normally people are here helping me or that sort of stuff." And so, I did have to check my ego early on in the process and be like. I'm here, to su- I'm here to support you because I love you and I want to be there for you and, and just make your life as easy as possible and like you're kind of a big deal. So, um, yeah, so I totally get that. That's my I story. get that all the time when I'm with you. They don't know who I am and I don't really care. But, um, again, I'm there to support you and to make whatever you're doing facilitate and help out. But nobody ever knows who I am. Sometimes that's good. I have your responsibility. But um, I think as well, just to there's a couple of things with what you said. When you're used to working on your own, you're used to being independent and making everything happen from, from the vision to actually implementing it all. Mm-hmm. So there's that. There's also the fact that once you get into Wait, let's stay with that point for a second, if you can. Or do you would rather continue? I'm, I'm just going to say it. Right, I'm going to write that down. Once you get into your zone of genius, and that can be doing any profession, once you're in it and in that flow... A lot of times you're oblivious to the extremist things, not that you're extremist thing, but you become oblivious to that because you're you're in the flow, you're doing it, and you're vibing with people. And then another thing, um, when I was shooting like Condoleezza Rice and Sanjay Gupta, I had a, a little meltdown with you beforehand because as a woman, as a woman, you walk in a lot of times, and I walk in with this, this six and a half foot tall guy who's very um, kind of commands attention and I get left in the shadows. And as a woman, as I was crying, explaining this to you, it's like, you need to let me leave because people don't realize that this is my gig and they would defer to the man. And I hate to say that happens, but it happens. So sometimes I think you overcompensate sometimes as a woman to allow that space for you to perform as the leader. You know, when we're on, um, gets together, I feel like we fill in the gaps and there's none of that. Um, yeah, I have a different take on that. I, it's not something I really think about because probably because it's just, you know, I've always been sort of on the set. I'm always sort of the central figure mm-hmm. of the set. Mm-hmm. So it's not something that I really have. It's not something I've really considered. Um, as, it, as it pertains to Zone of Genius, I, I noticed, especially early on in the process working with you and, and trying to figure out because we both do, we both come at a shop completely different. Our mm-hmm. approach is completely unique. And what we see is completely unique, um, which is one of the reasons I love working with you is because I have, I have a take on it. And it's like when a client gets images and content from us, it's almost like literally it is two completely unique perspectives of the same shop, which is brilliant. But one of the things that I noticed early on in the space, and, has, and you know, it's, it's taken me time to sort of get into the groove with you. It wasn't that I didn't have symbiosis with you on the set working with you. It's easy to sort of fall in line with that space. But because we both are, we're both charismatic people and, and making sure that when we're engaging with people, I don't know how to say this the right way, but ma- making sure that both of us have the opportunity to present our, our persona to the client. I found because I am sort of louder and more I'm like, I just sort of there, I'm just like a bigger dude, that I would tend to realize that I was sort of dominating the space. Mm-hmm. Um, and when I asked you that first time you ever worked with me, I was like, how can you didn't like hang out or how can you even talk to me or that sort of stuff? And you didn't. That first time you worked with me, I was probably... Because I was embarrassed being around you. Yeah. yeah. But it was because in retrospect, you know, you were like, oh, I was just there to work. But I was thinking like, shit, you know, I was the centerpiece right there. So it was like, you were just letting me have that space. And I'm always like, it's not my space. We're here to collaborate. So how, so it's interesting that now fast forward five years, we're, we're metaphorically in bed together, working on a brand new business. 
and I'm having some decent success with it. Mm-hmm. And for me, it's taken, for me, it's taken me the ability to learn how to sometimes take the back seat. And, and prior to being in business with someone of your, um, of your character build, I was generally always the one in charge. Even in the corporate life, I was always, I was always in the center of the, of the position. Um, I was always in leadership, all those things. And so for me, the, the, the podcast is, is how do two, how do two lovers, husbands and wives, whatever, run a business together without letting things get in the way that are, that could be emotionally driven. And, and for me, my number one thing was, it goes back to the ego, but it was sort of like, realizing that I don't always have the best way. And even if I do have the best way, your way is also just as good in its own right. And so letting that space have its own energy and its own sort of formation. Because you said, I want to talk more about that too, but you said something about being in charge. And I think we need to understand that whether it's in a business relationship, um, probably personal as well, being in charge is not the same as being responsible. Keep going. So you might feel like you're in charge, but when we're working together as well, we're both responsible. So whoever, whoever is seems like they're leading at that time doesn't mean that that other person is taking the backseat. They are just as responsible. So if we're in a situation where we're presenting to a client and you're up in front and you're, you're going through everything, I may not be contributing to that portion of it, but it's something as we're listening, as we're making notes, we're intentionally um gauging what's going on and then we have conversations after for things that you picked up on things that i picked up on so one person may need but that doesn't mean that you're both not responsible and it's kind of coming to terms with that where your strengths are where you fill in for each other as well and i was just speaking to um i just went for a walk down the street and took a neighbor's dog for a walk as well and i was just speaking to her after when you left and for some reason people like telling me everything and, um, you know, she's talking about her husband there and she's like, oh, well, we're not really like, I've been with him for seven years, but I'm not really committing to him. And, you know, this, this, and this and going into it. Wait, the people you're just talking to? Oh, yeah. So I was just talking to the lady down the street and she was giving me all of her dish on her relationship that she's been with her, this husband for seven years, but she's not really committed to him because of this, this, and this. And um, <laughs> we already knew that, didn't we? <laughs> You could tell by the way they walked down the street 50 feet apart. <laughs> I knew something was going on. But Did know, they approach you for swingers? No. Okay. No, I don't have that vibe, thank God. <sighs> Not that there's anything against it. But as Are we ever was, going to talk about that? That's a podcast, it too. It is a podcast. Okay. Yeah. Keep Anyways, um, I was intrigued with what she was saying because it was interesting to me that she's she was making known to me that she's with him, but she's not going to stay with him or it's not, you know, that kind of relationship. And she's, you know, one foot out the door, she could get anyone else. I think as well, when we go into any relationship, especially a business relationship as well, we need to decide. She better get moving. She's in her 70s. Oh. She's still out there. She's still viable. What I'm saying, though, is we need to decide how committed we are. We need to start that structured and be all in or don't bother at all. In a relationship or in a business? Both. <clears throat> well, what if there are couples that are... So are you saying as a marriage or are you just saying as a partnership in general? As a partnership in general. No, I'm talking I'm talking about Very romantically tough. speaking. Both. Otherwise, you're wasting both, both people's time. And, and, and it honestly, doesn't necessarily and, mean and a you, marriage. It just means you're committing to each other. Yeah. <clears throat> and it me. doesn't mean... It means... When I'm saying you're all in, when that person's not around in the business too, that negative talk breeds um, contempt. Ex- yeah, exponentially. It compounds. Yeah, that's interesting that you said that just now because we made that observation. Jesus, we have been in this. How how long have we lived here? Or have you lived here? A year and a half, almost two years. Three. 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 Oh, has it really been that long? Yeah. Wow. So I mean over. Two or three years ago when we first met them, we made that we made that observation. So people are going to make that observation in your business as well. They're going to feel that vibe if you're not aligned in all things and if you're not working together. So so can people be in business? So this whole conversation was centered around can a romantic partnership 
also be in a business partnership? And can people who are in a romantic partnership, so let's say those two down the street that we're talking about, even though they may or may not have sex like bunny rabbits every night, are they, could they run a business together and still be successful? I don't know. I think some of that bleeds over into it. You can still perform, but it doesn't have the long- longevity. Well, let's t- let's break that down for a second. So there's there's a couple there's a, there's people who are in a relationship, and they are or they aren't romantically aligned, and then there is people who are in a business partnership, and they they are or they are not business minded aligned. Then there's a, the the next caveat of people who are in a romantic relationship and they decide to also run a business partnership. So what I'm hearing you saying is that a romantic couple can run a business successfully if they're aligned, but a romantic couple that is not aligned romantically cannot have as much success as a business couple because the uh, the misalignment on the romantic side would cause subterfuge and cascade on the business side. Okay, I'm I'm agree with what you say, but no, I, that's I think a question. It, I think it works both ways, and I'm going to speak from experience. Um, I think you need to set it up right from the beginning because my past life, even though I was in the business, we were not aligned, and there was there was, and a lot of it is my fault because I, you know, I was a people pleaser and I didn't stand up for what I felt I needed. And there was no recognition. My name wasn't on anything. All the accolades went to one person and um, all the fame and glory. And that's my fault too for not stepping in. Well, I did step in, but it just wasn't. And that led it to contention. So I think you need to be aligned in all things. So if it's business, you need to be aligned in your business, what your expectations are, what you're happy with and what you, what you're agreeing to. And that may change. But you need to be aligned in that because otherwise there's passive aggressive, there's contention, all of that that comes from that. And so so with a relationship too, you need to be aligned and you need to be able to make that separation, which is really hard too, that when something shitty happens in business or you're frustrated in business, you don't bring that into your relationship. And that I think is the biggest struggle. As good as your relationship is, there's when you love what you're doing, it can bleed into your relationship if you're frustrated with something. Well, so I think where I'm going with that is that I I was married before and my wife at the time did work in my business. And and one of the observation I've, one of the observations I've made being in business and in bed with you, which should be the name of the podcast in business and in bed is that it's a good name, isn't it? Just came up with that right now. That's why I'm the genius of this relationship. (laughs) Um, (laughs) One of the things I noticed right away is that this is in retrospect. I used to get really frustrated with my ex-wife, both as a partner in bed, metaphorically, and as a partner in business. And, And one of the things I've noticed with you is that while I still get frustrated with you, and I'm sure vice versa, there's much more frustration you have with me, I don't get as I don't get angry or I don't get upset about it, and I'm because I don't feel the I didn't in, I did not enjoy being married to my wife, and because I didn't enjoy being married to her, and I wasn't really in alignment with her, and as a as a husband, when we did have situations that occurred with business, it would compound my frustration. Because I'd be like, fuck, man. You can't go home and complain about the boss or the employees or anything like that. Well, what I'm saying is, is that because I was already frustrated on one side of the, of the coin, I was just – my triggers on the other side of the coin were, were multiplied and compounded because I'm like, there's no good here. Like that's yeah. sort of like where I was. And what I've noticed in retrospect being with you is that while we still have arguments and we have frustrations with each other about things and they pop up and invariably they will – I'm so inclined to be, I'm so happy with you as in a romantic relationship. Like I genuinely worship the ground you walk on that when I do get frustrated with you in an argument as, a, as it pertains to business or disagreement, all I care about is finding the middle ground and, and solving the problem. Like that's, I, I didn't give a shit before. I'd be like, okay, let's just fight because I don't care. So that's one of the things I've noticed. 
I don't know if that so makes sense. Communication. Um, brilliant. You so and communication is critical across the board. Obviously, as a couple, uh, and we told the story um, the other night. Lisa and I were weirdos. We really like just enjoying hanging out with each other. And one of the things we do most of the time is, is we'll just sort of sit in the living room over a, a fire or out, wine, a fire, fire. A glass of wine. Maybe there's some music playing. Maybe we're reading. Maybe we're watching TV. But we're usually just sort of massaging. Even just to be creepy and weird. We usually just massage each other's feet. And I, the other day I was talking to a good friend of mine. And he, he wanted us to come over and it was like snowy. And I was like, you know, I think we're just going to stay here at the house and massage each other's feet. And he's like, what are you talking about? And and I was like, oh, yeah, well, that's what Lisa and I, we just, we just like to sort of like hang out with each other. And one of the things we like doing is massaging each other's feet. And he's like, he's like, oh, my God, that's so ridiculous. Like, it's gross. I hate my feet touched. And it, it, we were talking about this this morning. And I said, well, have you ever given your wife a, a foot massage? Because she would probably really like that. And if, if you guys would give each other massages, it's probably like it usually leads somewhere else. And he's like, no, she hates having her feet touched. And I was like, well, how do you know that? And he's like, well, I just assume I hate my feet getting touched. So I'm assuming she does hers. And I was like, it's probably not true. So like, anyway, my point is, is that they have that break up there. Um, they're also in business together and they disagree about a lot of things and they argue about things now on a regular basis. And it's sort of like, it's sort of reaching this point where they just kind of like, when I'm around, I'm like, right, I'm just going to silently creep out of the room because it becomes uncomfortable. And I'm going somewhere with this is the, the communication piece of theirs. It, it really seems to be lacking in a lot of different areas there. And, and because they don't really talk and um, anyway, it's just, it just sort of I think digress. you find, have to find ways to align and ways to connect. Mm -hmm. And again, you're going to have disagreements. You're going to have a different way of approaching something. But having that communication what, where this is okay, this is not okay, this is how I'm feeling, and always have that that open banter going. So I think um, – because we don't want to – And not all people are set up to work together. Sometimes it's nice to be able to come home and, and bitch about your employer or your employee, and you're not going to be able to do that. So you need to do things as well that align your mindset and um, – allow you to to have some freedom somewhere unless you like being with that person 24 7 so you you would go play soccer you go to the gym or you do something that you have to have something else outside of your business and your relationship that feeds your soul and keeps you that individual that you are so you don't just morph into each other because our business is better and our relationship is better because we're two totally different people yeah that's a good point and uh, that made me think about that because one of the things that and this is not a bitching session against my ex-wife. I know she listens to these podcasts, so like, don't don't go get a, a machete and show up at my house tonight. I'm not like talking shit. I'm just like, this is just story time, right? Story time with Devo. And one of the things that um, sort of got in the way of my relationship, there was a bunch of different things. This is it, it is what it is, right? Um, but she didn't have her own life. She sort of adopted my way of life. And, you know, I started a company softball team and she played on the company softball team, even though she didn't work for the company. Uh, I played soccer on the weekends. She would just come hang out at the soccer field, even though she wasn't even part of the team. Yeah, you like, that's, that's, no, hold on, let me well. go somewhere. Hold on, let me go. I'm going somewhere. Just let me finish. So your point was, is like, have your own life. I'm not saying you can't commingle lives, but there's a time like you sort of just have your own friends and you sort of go off and do your own thing. I have my own space. I go off and do my own thing. And then we come together. So I like the point of if you are going to be in bed and in business together, make sure that you still there's, have your own stories to tell. There's some semblance of autonomy that you retain that's all about you. Yeah. So we're getting with, we're, I was going somewhere, they're like, I want people to have takeaways from this call. So we talked about having a strong partnership, like mm -hmm. metaphorically and literally. Mm -hmm. We talked about communication. And then the other piece now wait, that we're- Wait, wait, when you say partnership, so you're talking about almost like, like you would have a marriage contract or a relationship contract. You want to have some sort of basis of, of, what your commitment is to each other in in business yeah, yeah i think yeah. that i think that's important Absolutely. to have i believe it's a critical piece of an understanding of that you're both on the same page of how to grow the business you're both on the same page of how to market the business you're both on the same page on how you hire people to support your business like whatever it is that you're doing for for work if you don't agree on it and and somehow meet each other where they are then you're just going to – like if you just were to concede and be like, I'm just going to let you have your way on yeah. this one, somewhere down the line that's going to come back oh, and bite me in the ass. It is. Right? It is. So you're elevating your business by doing that. Absolutely. Um, another thing I heard you say was um, um, in terms of having – like, and I, I said retaining your autonomy. 
what that does, because, you know, while I miss the shit out of you and you're, you're heading off on a trip right now to Utah in a couple of weeks and I won't see you for a couple of weeks, like one of the things that has been interesting about our relationship is I live four hours away from you. And while I see you basically every other week, that week off is sort of your time to do your things in a way. And I'm not, pre- I'm not saying I'm in favor of that, but it's been interesting to sort of see that relationship develop. And in that week when I'm not with you, it's like, damn, I really can't wait to see you again. Mm-hmm. And and even though we talk every single day, it's just not the same. So we talk business a lot. Yeah. So my point is, I'm saying, and I'm not in favor of us staying together four hours apart for the rest of our lives. But what I am saying is that one of the one of the contexts that I've that I've been drawn to as sort of observations is that when I'm not with you, it really makes me excited to see you again. Does that make sense? That's part of my plan. Yeah. So um, that's an interesting space. Um, the other piece that I, I drop, oh, sorry, we already talked about it, is dropping your ego at the door. We were on a podcast this morning, and one of them asked us a question about, I forget what the question was. Um, she had to repeat it like nine times. But <laughs> when two people who are, who are honest, and I don't mean this like, oh, I'm a powerful person, but when two powerful figures, and, and we're both relatively powerful in the sense of like, we just, in, we, yeah, we're ways. good at what we do, right? Mm-hmm. When we come together, <clears throat> There's a give and a take. Just like when we're shooting together, I sort of like, sometimes you run the show, I step back, vice mm-hmm. versa. Mm-hmm. And, and in business, it's the same thing. So you have to be able to read the room mm-hmm. and you have to be able to pick up on the subtleties and cues of your partner. It's almost like an invisible language that we have. And I'm always watching you to sort of see what cadence you take on. Like yesterday, you were at the distillery. And, and even though I was there to... <laughs> so, I obviously have a drinking problem. <laughs> Even though I was there to support you, like I noticed the guy was asking me questions on what he should do here because you were off getting your equipment. I was like, this is not my space. So I read the room and was like, you know, talk to Lisa. She's yeah. the boss. I'm just here to support her. So that was it, a test. I asked him to ask you that. So you passed. Yeah, but it's <laughs> thank you. So, but it's really important. What my point is, is really important. That if you are going to be in bed and in business together, you have to recognize that there is a time and a place for your role. And that role is constantly evolving. Sometimes you're in a leadership capacity. Sometimes you're in a follow capacity, right? Yeah. So can I mention two things? If, no, follow. Listen. <laughs> <laughs> I think you need to uh, try to set hours, and we have a really hard time with this, but when you turn the business off, and it's so hard not to talk about business, and you'll you'll be like casually enjoying each other, and then you'll try to pull it back into it. It's really hard to have a conversation, Mm -hmm. whether it's a phone call or in person, where when it's after hours, we still don't bring business in. So you're going to have to try really hard for that. Mm -hmm. And the other... Oh, sorry. No, I like that, and I like to just... Repeat, repeat that again because we don't always do it. Mm-hmm. And one of the biggest complaints we have with each, this is not with each other, but one of the biggest complaints we have is like, dude, we're not spending any time together. All we're doing is talking business. Mm-hmm. So I, that, that, is, that is a critical yeah. piece that needs to be brought out is that there needs to be a stopping point. No matter, even if it's just having dinner together or taking a walk around the block together or and agreeing not to talk work. Mm-hmm. When you're in your bedroom, we don't sit and talk work. Like that's the sort of space, and and you have to reserve that and make that sacred. a sacred. Yeah. So yep. establish a sacred space that is just on the romantic side for your each other to enjoy each mm-hmm. other. And I think as well, just like in a relationship, you wouldn't want to marry yourself. You need to appreciate, get your ego out of it, and appreciate the differences because you fill in so many spaces that I don't fill in, mm-hmm. and I'm grateful for that. I'm grateful for that, you know, and that just elevates everything. You don't want anyone doing exactly the same thing. You bring different gifts to the table. So that's sort of the divide and conquer sort of um, philosophy. And and we did not do that early on in our business. We were both sort of like showing up to all the meetings. We're showing up to all the conference calls. We're showing up to all the shoots. And while we still do a lot of our, most of our work together, we've started to divide some of the roles and the functions in the business so so that we each are sort of responsible for our own zone of genius, if you will, and then we come together to collaborate as needed. And I think that's really important. I think that's a really important step for, for a successful bed and business relationship mm-hmm. that you clearly have something that you own. It's sort of like that autonomy piece in your own personal life. Like you own multiple facets of this business and it's like your gig right and i'm part of this and i own that gig and then we just come together and ask each other questions and i think that's more there's more power to that space mm-hmm. you're and smiling like no sometimes you just get in the other person's way were you smiling because from other reason because you're like I'm smirking just in at awe me. of you <laughs> was there something you disagreed with that 
No, not at all. Well, then don't I think, smile like that. <laughs> I think sometimes you just get in people's way. Mm-hmm. Well, one of the things that I... Sorry. Still be involved. Yeah, well, I agree. You're st- we're still involved. Yeah. But it, it, it's sort of like frosting on the cake. Like, I clearly know how to do this piece of the business really well. Lisa knows how to do that exact same with the business really well. Spend the money. <laughs> but she's really good at other things that I'm not as good at, and I'm really good at things that she's not as good at. So being able to identify that, it's no different than your team that you hire. You want to hire people that are really good at what they do and let them sort of stay in that space. Mm-hmm. And it's okay that there's crossover, especially if you're a startup business and you've got people just like Swiss Army knifing around. But by and large, that's less productive. If you can find people to sort of stay in the lane of what they're really good at and let them just hone in that craft, develop them later. But um, as owners, we have to sort of kind of take the same principle into play. Mm-hmm. Um, the, other, the other piece um, that I sort of is sort of big for me as we've kind of gone into this and I was trying to read my notes over here um, is, is making time for play in all of this. And I don't mean that just from a business perspective and a, and a romantic perspective. I'm like, it's important that there's a sort of a playful aspect to everything that we do. So um, we enjoy each other's company and we work a lot of hours. Like sometimes we work 16 hours a day, but we always make time to have some sort of play, even if it's just something as simple as taking the dogs to the park or going over to the beach or making a pizza, just like stupid stuff mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. that you have to make time for because that's part of what the relationship is. why I fell in love with you in the first place. So keeping it playful. I, I, you're glossing out on me. No, I'm not. Oh, okay, cool. I sometimes have to explain everything to her. I know. Okay, so we've um, kind of come up on the time buffer that we've already... I love it. I love it. It was a good discussion. All right. So I just want to sort of recap because I wrote them down while we were talking here. If, if you do decide to start a business with your lover, um, establish clear parameters around what that partnership looks like. You know, even if the ownership options, we have a contract as much as I don't like writing that down. Um, what's that called when um, you get married to somebody? Agreement. No, what's that oh. called when you get married to somebody and they have a... Like if if a prenup, yeah, it's sort of like a business prenup, and and as much as it sounds like, as much as it sounds almost malicious to create because you're like, oh, I would never leave my partner, or I'm always going to love this woman forever, or vice versa. Like, I do agree. Like, you need to have it because heaven forbid if something were to happen legally, you're not up shit's creek, right? Mm-hmm. Vice versa. Mm-hmm. Um, the other piece is communication. It, just like in your relationship, having clear, open lines of communication. And my grandfather always used to grab me by the ear and he's like, you know, you have two of these, Debbie. And, and, and I was like, yes, I know. And he's like, and you have one mouth. So use two ears, one mouth, listen more. So communication is really critical to not only your relationship, but being in, in business together, right? Mm-hmm. And what are you smiling about? <laughs> Do we need to go take it to a romantic platitude right now? No. <laughs> um, number three, Drop your ego at the door, dude. Okay? Like, for real. Just because she's a woman, I know she's a woman. And, like, I, I know it's she's inferior and stuff. But as a man, I sometimes have to let her have that space. So, fellas, like, if you're going to be in business with your woman, like, let her have a little bit. Of, no, I'm just joking. Drop your ego at the door because uh, it's not about gender. It's not about anything. It's just about being um, respectable to your partner. Mm-hmm. Like, y- mm-hmm. you bring value to the table. Yeah. It's up to me to be like you actually do that way better than I do and I'm just going to let you have that space and and rock on, girl, because I support you for it. And then, um, do you want me to keep reading these? Yeah, um, the I can't other, read your writing, so. Um, so the other one is divide and conquer your, your duties. Mm-hmm. Like, be very clear on your role and my role and, and cross-pollinate as needed. And just so there's no confusion, your role usually ends up being making food for us. <laughs> That's true. So, <laughs> so, so <laughs> like... <laughs> I'm not doing all the girl duties and he's doing all the boy duties. It's true. This is true. Let me tell you what she does behind the scenes. Uh, I'm going there. Sorry. Um, the other piece of it is, 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 is drop it at the end of the day. Like you need to set up some time where you just cut off work. You take time to be lovers. You take time to be partners. You take time to be dating. You take time to have co- communication and conversation outside of like, you can't allow your work to just fully consume mm-hmm. everything you do. Mm-hmm. And then um, the other piece of that is sort of keeping and retaining your autonomy and making sure that whatever you brought to the table in the first place still retains. And you can share that, right? Mm-hmm. Like I've met your friends and I've hung out with you in your different relationships and all those sorts of things, but you still have that space that's all your own. And mm-hmm. so I think that would be my only tips for you. Yeah. Yeah. Love it. Okay, cool. If you like this uh, podcast and you like what she has to say, um, 
if you like what I have to say occasionally, you can drop us a comment below, right? Mm-hmm. You can follow us on Instagram. We really would love that. And if you like the show, like us, follow us so you get notified when future shows come out. And so you're going to see him on Instagram at Fusion Photog. See myself at Lisa Staff Photo. Are we going to be launching a new podcast just with this handle? Because that's what Casey says we, we have should. to. should. So stay tuned. There's right. a lot of work in, in progress. A lot of work in progress. Just like me. All right. Work in progress. Find your zone of genius. Roll with it. There's things that you do better than anyone else. Understand what those are. And if you'd like us, if you'd like us to help you discover what your zone of genius is, mm-hmm. you can give us a call or you can come on the podcast if you're interested and can actually engage in conversation. Like if you're willing to go down a rabbit hole with us, we want you on. Otherwise, Heisman off. We love having conversations. And I'm not sure if you were leading into Drop Us Line, it's Broke Connectors as well. I wasn't, but go ahead. Drop us line. It's broke connectors. Okay. We love to talk, as you can obviously see. Um, and we love to share ideas. We love to connect with people. And we honestly, truly believe, I believe our gift on this planet is to act as a conduit for people, connect people, help people understand, and like I said, understand their zone of genius or their superpowers. And, and that's what sort of drives us. And I think that's what drew us together in the first place is because we both had operated our businesses independently and, and were excited about the way we each did things and brought those powers together to sort of compound that effect. So, yeah, I'm just rambling now. So close this out. We know that you could spend time listening to a lot of other people ramp on and on, but we're glad that you listened to us. All right. See you on the other side.